Well, another day, another problem. I uh, have suffered a few more hard drive failures in my various backups. This is supposed to be going home eventually for off-site backup, but <laughs> that doesn't seem to be the case. It just kind of continues to live here. One of the two terabyte drives in this backup machine has failed. And I have the serial number, but I don't know which drive it is. I know it's a Hitachi, so that's uh, half the problem, I guess. It's, um, the problem is figuring out which one of these three drives in the middle here is the one that failed. And because I'm cheap, I have this wonderful little upside down Seagate. There we go. Two terabyte hard drive I'm going to be switching for. Oops. Oh. Oddly enough, as cheap as uh, SSDs are starting to get, I'd almost be tempted to uh, make this an all SSD system. But I don't have the money to get that crazy yet. <laughs> I don't want to spend, let me think. Oh, I don't remember what I paid for my uh, two terabyte Intel data center drives. I think they were like 150 each. It's like 1200 for eight drives. It's a lot of money. But yeah, my files are, my primary storage is um, on some Intel data center drives. So in theory, I shouldn't have to worry about losing files on those. They were sitting at around, I think, 90% health. And based on the write endurance of those drives, there's no realistic way I should be able to wear them out unless I start doing like hard drive mining on them, which I don't even know how that works or how you make money doing that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's not something I'm going to be doing. Unfortunately, I made things hard for myself. And I'm going to have to remove screws from both sides of the drives. So hopefully, I guessed correctly, and the drive I picked is the one that failed. Otherwise, I'm going to have to pick again. And... There's three drives, so that means I'm going to pick the wrong drive twice if I get it wrong the first time. <laughs> uh, also, I got lucky, kind of. I managed to pick up another one of these cases from a recycling pickup, and it was missing its side panel, but it had all its front covers. So this front's going to be covered up properly now, although that means I do lose my little handle hole. I kind of like picking this thing up from the front by grabbing it through the uh, expansion bay. I'm going to have to unplug this drive. Hopefully I can guess correctly. Let's see. Is this three on the... No, that's not even close. Well, that's a bummer. I'm going to plug this back in before I forget where it goes. Same with this. I would screw it back in, but just in case I wrote the serial number down wrong, I'm going to hold on to... Or, well, yeah, I'm not going to screw it back in. <laughs> Probably be easier if I didn't have a tripod in the way, but I don't know. So I kind of knew this particular drive that I'm trying to find was failing because TrueNAS was giving me errors. The only thing was, is I wasn't leaving it on long enough to figure out which drive it was consistently. Because if it was only running for a little bit, TrueNAS wouldn't complain. It would only complain once it had enough chances basically to fail writes. But I left it on overnight recently to do a backup, so. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. 
So it was able to tell me which drive failed. This is a mess. I'm going to disconnect this power connector, I think. Maybe. Oh, boy. This is why I like servers. I don't have to do this cable routing in servers. Let's see here. HXZ5RF. So yeah, this should be my bad drive, which is unfortunate. Just gonna make sure that the other one that's in there. HXV7PF. Not even close. And the next step will be to shove this drive in and then screw everything back together. I shouldn't even th be thinking the thought, but uh, my uh, cold storage backup machine, that one's been running fine for a while now. Knock on wood. <laughs> I figured I'd check that, see how many servers I have with drives failing. The only reason I happened to see that I had a drive failure in my uh, primary backup server was the fact that it had a blinking orange light. Uh, I have not set up alerts for anything on my servers yet. <laughs> kind of bad. I really, I really shouldn't have alerts set up. Kind of playing with fire, but um. Yeah, that's kind of why I have three separate backups of all my files right now. Because I don't want to lose anything. And there's really no good reason why I should. But, like I said, three backups. I just need to get one off-site. I'm thinking if enough two terabyte drives start coming my way, I have another one of these boards. And I might build another one of these machines out and then have two cold storage machines. Because really my current cold storage machine that I have going right now, that one's not supposed to be running 24 seven, but it kind of has been because I've been too lazy to take this home. Also, I kind of have to do some work. I have to make sure that I don't saturate my internet connection doing backups because I don't want this to cripple everything else that I have running. I, mean, I don't really care about the live stream necessarily too much. It's not like it's going to kill me to have the cat's nanny cam down. But I, I don't know. I like the idea of having it up. I like being able to check on it, especially if I'm home and the cats are at the office. Oh, so I'll have to re, re-sliver the pool or whatever once I add this drive in, which would be, take some time, but hopefully that'll be the end of that for a while. I really do like this build. It's really clean. It uh, turned out really nice. It's kind of a pain to get drives in and out, but um, yeah. I don't remember how much RAM I gave this. I'm going to guess I gave it 8 gig, because those are single-sided sticks. I didn't feel like wasting the... 16 gig of memory on this. It really shouldn't need it. The only thing this needs to be able to do is uh, second backup, I guess. Cold storage is backup too, but that one's not supposed to be online all the time. And I will keep this with read-only access for at home if I want to access files because the connection between my house and my office is just too slow to try to use anything live, especially if I want to watch like any of the videos I have on my hard drives. But yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully this machine will play nice for a while. I think, I think that's the second drive failure I've sustained in this build. Oh, get that Ethernet cable. But the only reason. I'm seeing so many drive failures in these is because I'm using used drives and they're like, they're just random used drives. It's not like I'm trying to find nice used drives. It's just, you know, this came out of somebody's PC that gave me to recycle it. So I, I erased this drive and I put it in my pool, but 
Yeah, the next project will be is figuring out my server. I'm not too thrilled about that one because the three terabyte drive in that might be tricky to replace. I don't know. I've never, I've never done that with a RAID controller before. I was kind of just hoping that those drives would last forever, to be honest. But yeah, I'll we'll take a look at that next, I suppose. So it's a different day, but now I'm in my server room, and this is a server that has a drive down. And the only reason I noticed is because I'm getting ready to hook up my third server that's supposed to be my testing server. And uh, has this little blinking orange light <laughs> trying to let me know that something's wrong. So. Yeah, that was uh, kind of concerning. I got a cable management arm Oops. set up on that server. I need to mount the little blinky light. I was going to have to buy one, but since I've been doing some cleaning, trying to get ready for an auction, I ended up finding one I didn't know I had. <laughs> Seems to be the common theme with my office. So... According to what I could find on the internet, since I'm using the RAID controller on this server rather than using software managed RAID like ZFS, all I have to do is pull this drive, which was scary, <laughs> label it as bad so I don't forget, and then this is another of the exact same drive that is cold spare. And my understanding is all I have to do is shove it back in there and hopefully, oh look, the warning went away. Hopefully now the Perk H710 in my server will uh, make things right again. I don't know. Oh, got blinking lights. Oh wow, that's quick. So this is a RAID 50, and I believe these four are one of the RAID 5s in the RAID 50, basically. So it looks like it's in the process of rebuilding. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I was going to do this last night when I filmed fixing my TrueNAS box, but I wanted to let that finish re-slivering before I tried doing anything with this machine. I still would have had this backup and then my primary files, but I figured I should probably do the smart thing and not lose data. But I'm pretty excited. I didn't realize how, how easy that was going to be. I didn't think I could just pull a drive and put a new one in. I did partially test that drive. It's This drive's been tested before in the past. But, um, yeah, I, I retested it, I guess you could say, most of the way, and it didn't throw any errors. So, I just figured, throw it in, and figure it out the hard way. Hopefully, I'll be fine on drives for a while. Having uh, two drive failures at the same time is kind of scary. That's kind of why I have three backups now. <laughs> um, doesn't help that these are used drives. These uh, three terabyte Hitachi drives I'm using are from 2012. I think they've been sitting in storage now for the last couple of years before I started using them, but yeah, they're they're pretty old. I was looking at some used drives. Craft Computing put out a few affiliate links for some e drives on eBay that looked really good, but I'm not really using the storage that I have. This, after the RAID 50, gives me about 16 terabytes, and I'm using 2 terabytes of that currently. Which, uh, yeah, it's overkill. I think between all the arrays I have, I have like 50 terabytes at my disposal. If I didn't care about having backups of my files. Also, if my needs for storage space don't increase enough, I'd be really tempted just to replace those spinning drives with 2 terabyte SSDs. SSD prices have been dropping. It's still going to be expensive, but like... I think this this batch of eight, if I remember right, of the two terabyte drives cost me like twelve hundred dollars, and there's really no reason why any of those drives should fail. Hopefully, but 
yeah, hopefully a happy ending there. Hopefully uh, <laughs> no more drive failures. Yeah, it's still rebuilding. I, I imagine it's going to take a while being that they're three terabyte drives. But yeah, apparently after I looked at the logs in uh, August, this had a predictive failure. Um, and then yeah, it failed September 13th. So no more, uh, no more of that drive. But this one's still been chugging along. Looks like it's getting dusty again, but the uh, eight one terabyte drives in there are nice and happy. Once I get my, what I call my snowball, um, to my house and start doing remote backups, I am gonna turn my cold storage off and make it actual cold storage. One thing I'd really like to do is actually use a different chassis Either that or find rails for this. Mostly because I'm losing part of this U and I don't know, it's not like I need it, but it'd be nice to have it. Um, I mean, half the stuff in this rack right now is not being used. I got all that stuff up there. The R730, I already forgot what that is, C6320, and that KVM's dead course so and this is just my uh, theoretical test server I need to get that set up here I forget what drive base this has uh, it says two and a half or three and a half inch I mean drive base I don't know what I'm gonna put in there for drives I might put a pair of 500 gig SSDs in there and a RAID 0 and then maybe some one terabyte drives and a RAID 5. Really this is just going to be so I can play with stuff without shutting down my server because like there's stuff I'd like to try with video cards but I don't want to shut my server down. It's kind of annoying having to take it down. So if I can get my hands on a 1080 Founders Edition I'm probably going to move the 1080 Founders Edition to my server and then I want one of my Tesla M40s in this, just so it's easier to access. If I want to test a Tesla M40 compatibility in different machines. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of complicated. But, hopefully, uh, no more drive failures for a bit. I gotta knock on my wood grain walls that aren't made out of... Well, they might be made out of wood, but <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching.